Hey guys, it's Dark Recycle and FPV, and I had a question come in today uh, from a customer asking about the um, the amp meter, the amperage meter uh, in Betaflight, and why it's showing such a crazy uh, number. So I'm gonna give you an example of what we're talking about. I'm gonna show you why, why it's doing it and what you have to do to fix it. Okay? So the the, uh, the sorry, the current, the the amp currents, right? So let me go ahead and do a split screen here, or do a picture in picture, I guess. So let me do this. Here we go. All right. So I've got a uh, HGLRC board here right in front of me. And um, one of the things that we need to check, what, what I'm going to show you here is what we're noticing in Betaflight. So actually, I'm going to put the Betaflight screen on the board as well. So let me do a three-way screen here. So uh, let's see if I can get this right. One, two, three. Uh, there we go. Okay. All right. So you see the Betaflight screen. And I'm, it's, this is going to be a pretty quick video to show you what you need to do. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to connect this in. Now, this is to an AC to DC converter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this... Uh, I've got about 10.8 volts. I'll pump it up here a little bit. Uh, and my current amperage, there we go. Okay, and my current amperage reading is uh, on my on my device here is going to show it's 0.13 amps, right? So this is just sitting still, quiet, 0.13 amps. I'm plug it in. You're going to see it pop up on here. Okay, and here's the problem that they're having, right? So the problem is that when I go to power and battery, um, I'm showing 6.6 .6 amps right now, and that's only because I changed. Let me go to the CLI. I'm just going to type in the word defaults, and I'm going to load the defaults back in. Okay, and then you're going to see this thing's going to jump up to like 22. All right, but we've got nothing. We're not using anything, but it's still going to jump up. So let me show you what we're talking about. All right, so as you can see here, it's showing that we're doing like 26, 27, 25, 27 amps, right? Okay. Well, the reason it's doing that, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that as these companies make these boards smaller, they start removing components on there, right? So in this case, there is no current sensor on here. So even though we are trying to get a current, we have no current sensor on here. Therefore, you have to add an external current sensor, okay? So let me show you how that's going to work. So I, right now, I'm running 0.13. Now, I will tell you the voltage is right at 12.3. That's pretty much right where I'm at. Um, unfortunately, like I said, the battery, the current that's coming in here is wrong. And so it's throwing everything off, right? And you've got to get this or else you need to disable it, one or the other, okay? Um, so here it goes. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to disconnect, all right? And I'm going to unplug the power. And this is what needs to change. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to uh, modify this board. Now, I just put on this Emacs here just so I had something to pull current from once we test this, okay? So this is the additional, this is the add-on current sensor, right? So here's your current sensor here. And this is the piece that HGLRC makes, Okay. And this is what you have to have in order to make that work properly to get a current reading. Now, I'm not going to take off uh, this XT60. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder onto it. Let me find my, our new, where did I, I got a bunch of flux pens. There it is. See, we got our new flux pens uh, with our new logo on them. Uh, it came out pretty cool. Real excellent. Uh, uh, easy to use stuff. All right. So I'm going to take this current sensor and I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to uh, put some uh, flux right there, and then I'm going to get ready to tin it up. But before I do that, I'm going to get a, um, a cable here. Now, I use a smoke stopper, so I'm going to use a smoke stopper, which is going to kind of inhibit how much current I can run anyway, but it doesn't matter. And so I'm going to plug this in there, which means basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump off of here with an XT60 female on this side, and that way I can plug directly into this, and I can use that for all other boards then. So let me grab a uh, XT60 female. Give me one second. <clears throat> and then I'll grab some cable. Grab a little thing here. This is awesome, by the way. If you don't have one of these and you're doing a lot of soldering with these XT60s, this is the way to go. Uh, so you can find them on our website. They just hold everything perfectly the way I need it. All right, so on here, I'm also going to use the flux pen, so let me uh, get that back out. Just going to put some flux around here. And I'm not going to put much, uh, actually, you know what? I think I already have one of these made. You see? Uh, nope. Nope. I thought I did, but I don't. All right. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and get some cable here real quickly and, uh, and get this going. Let me get some, uh, I don't really want to use the cable here, but I don't have much of a choice. Okay, so we'll just 
get some of this in here. Now, this part I know you're not watching this to see how to make a, a video. I mean, how to make a cable, but I've got to make it anyway, so you're kind of stuck at this point. All right, I'm gonna get the flux paste here. And again, all these things you can find on our website if you need flux paste or flux pens or solder or anything. Now that we carry it all, a lot of it we've picked out for ourselves, so you're gonna see it branded with our name on it. Uh, but in our case, it's the same stuff I'm using here. It's the same stuff I use on all my builds. All right, so with that said, we're gonna go ahead and just pre-tin the wire. So let me just go ahead I don't knock that out. Actually, let's do it like this. Um, let's go this way. Give you a little bit more viewing room there. There we go. That should work. Okay. So let's go ahead and pretend. All right. There's one. Now we'll pretend the ground. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and uh, gonna get some solder <coughs> in the terminals here on the XT60, the female side. So we'll start with the ground, I guess. Let me see if I can just get this in there real quick. All right, it's gonna be fairly quickly, quick process here. So I'm just gonna kind of get it right where it needs to be, get this solder a little melted already, and then just kind of put that wire in there, and then just run the solder iron up the cable a little bit to spread that solder out. All right, now I'm going to do the same for the positive side. So let me go ahead and just get that ready. Get some of this solder here. There we go. All right, and drop some in here to get it ready. And I'm not loosening this and then, and then putting this uh, piece in. I'm just kind of leaving it uh, sitting on the top here. So if you see that XT60 female connector moving around, really I could open this red block up and then hold it in place. But... <coughs> I'm not going to be doing enough of this. This will be a pretty quick job. All right, again, I'm just going to loosen this up here, heat it up, put the cable in, and then just spread the solder up the line. Okay, so there we go. So, so far, now we've got it. And so now I'm just going to pick the length that I want of this wire. Uh, I'll go out to about right here. Uh, you know what? I may use this down the road or something else. Let's just make it a little bit longer. Okay, so there's that. So now I'm gonna put this wire away. Okay. All right. Walk away. Let's go ahead and strip the rest of this here. I want these to be somewhat the same length. So let's just do that. There you go. Not really worried about the color right now, so I'm just going to pick whatever I have available right in front of me, which will be blue. So get some blue heat shrink. All right, so I'm going to tin the wire again real quickly. Okay. There we go. Okay, wire's pre-tin now. It takes a little bit longer because this wire's pretty thick. All right, wire's pre-tin, so we're gonna let that sit aside. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tin the board now. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and drop the positive, another 
positive pad. Here we go. On the ground. All right, and then on our current. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let me get the. Uh, we're gonna put the uh, heat shrink on real quickly. Make sure we got our our uh, cables protected here, especially where they're terminated at this end. Like I said, they're both gonna be blue. Oh, you know what? That's the wrong size blue. So let me just go ahead. Let me cut this blue in half and use this for both. Alright, so there we go, everything's in place now, okay, now we'll get rid of this little trash stuff here, get the table clean. Alright, so there we go, okay, now we're going to solder our cables on, let's get ready to do that real quickly. So we'll do our ground first. Put a little bit more on here to make sure I've got it on properly. Okay, and now we're gonna go do the positive here. We'll add some more right here. on to hold it in place while I do this. Okay. All right. So there's that. Now the only thing left to do is add a current sensor. Well, one of the things that we know about this board, and that like most boards, there is a current sensor wire now, you have a current sensor wire <clears throat> on the board itself that runs from the ESC, and then you're going to have one here. Now, I need to use the magnifying glass. Give me one second because I can't see any of this stuff. So give me one sec to see uh, where we have. Uh, okay, so our current sensor for this board, all right, is going to be, it's the pad right here underneath the, um, underneath the uh, uh, plug. So let me just go ahead and clear these out because there's, there's a bunch of junk right here. So let me just clean it up a little bit. Let's see if I can get that cleared out. And then, and you'll want to look for it on your board, whether, you know, it doesn't even matter if it's HDLRC or somebody else. Um, just look for your current. Now, I know this is not on your screen real quick, but it's only because I'm trying to look through the magnifying glass to get this off. So bear with me a second. There's a ton of glue on here. So it's hard to see. Well, actually it may not be current. I'm gonna have to see where the current is. Give me one sec. Now that I get this glue off, I can see and read and it doesn't say, it doesn't look like it's current, but I wanna make sure. so much glue it's hard to read all right give me one sec i'm gonna go check and see just want to verify i can't read any of the labels that are on there
Okay, so the current sensor, I, I, thought, I thought there'd be a pad also, but there's not. There's only one, there, the one that I'm seeing is coming from the uh, plug only, and I didn't really want to have to take that out, but I'm going to. So on this board, I'm sorry guys, I was hoping that there was another option, but there's not. So on that board, um, we're going to start with the second to last, because we also have our ESC. So what we've got here is... On your cable, on your pins here, uh, you've got your yellow wire here. This is actually a current sensor. This is the, the green one is going to be your communication back and forth to give you your ESC uh, telemetry. But, sorry, I need to get this out of the way now. I, I thought we'd also have a pad here too in case we didn't want to use this, but I don't see the pad right now and I don't really want to delay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the, the yellow cable here. The yellow cable here is going to be my current sensor that we're going to actually solder on to our current sensor here. Uh, let me see. I'm going to use, and I'm, there may be a pad on here, another designated pad. I didn't see it. And I really don't want to waste too much time here. So let me get these glasses out and I'll see. I'll go back later and see, but I didn't see one right off immediately and I don't really want to delay any longer. So, so what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> and I don't think on the ESC, yeah, I don't see anything on the ESC to touch to and the the current sensor on the ESC, since the ESC doesn't have one, um, the current sensor is a no cable. So even if it's plugged in there, it's going to get nothing. So <clears throat> now you may have on your other ESCs or wherever this is going to go, you may have the option for it, but in this one we don't. So we're just going to go ahead and remove this yellow cable. Okay, and we're just going to kind of gently remove it there. There we go. Now, normally I guess you could, uh, because I'm going to be using this, I could you know, wire a cable to here and attach it, but I'm just gonna kind of solder this on so we can get going with this. So I'm gonna attach the current sensor wire and you could use this wire or you could do whatever you wanted. Uh, let me grab these right here. Okay, now I'm not gonna tin this at all. I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it because it's only gonna stay for this test and then I'm gonna, do, and then I'm gonna disconnect it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead with our current sensor plugged in and everything else done. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my cables. Okay, <clears throat> there, just like that. And I'm going to um, get my uh, system plugged right in here like this. Get that lined up. Hopefully that's giving me a decent connection. I don't know if that's enough in there, but we're gonna see, all right? Okay, looks like it is. So now we have our current sensor, okay? Now let's go back to the Betaflight screen. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, and here we go. Let do their split screen again. So we'll go threes, one, two, whoops. One, two, three. Here we go. Okay, so we're back at our main screen like we were, and we're going to look at the current now. So let's go ahead and connect. Ooh, let me put my USB in. Kind of leave this to where it's not, not at risk of grounding out. So let's just, for the sake of holding this wire down, let me just put this here. There, okay. So if we connect now, we're going to see, um, we're going to go to our power and battery, right? And now look, now I've got proper amperage. All right. So now I'm running 0.13, so I can easily um, up my scale here. So let me just keep taking it up. Actually, I'll just type it. It'll be a little bit quicker, I think. So I want to get to 0.13. So now I'm going to increase my scale. So let me go to 1,000 and say save. And let me see where I'm at. I'm close. Let's go to 15, 1400, save. And I'm gonna say that I'm pretty close here. All right, so I have no problem with this. I'm at 0.13 versus 0.17. If I go to 1500, um, all right, that's, that's pretty close. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the motor and I'm going to put the amps up 
to, let's say, one, as close to one as I can get. Uh, this is a little over one. Okay, so, let me see. And I'm going to just sit here and calibrate it just a little bit. So let me click save. Uh, let me go to uh, 400. Click save. I'm good here, okay? I feel pretty good about this. So now I'm just going to go to my calibration. And I'm going to say that my measured voltage is 12.2. And my measured amperage is 1.06. And I'm going to click calibrate. Okay? Now, if I look, I am right in line. So now if I take my motor and I drop it down, all right, and I go back to my power. Oops, sorry. I got to get this thing to start working properly. There we go. We're right in line. So when we're dead, we're at about 0.2. And when we're running, we were right in line. So again, I'm going to go to my motors. I'm going to crank this thing up to where I, I see a reading of about... Uh, let's do 110, 1.1. I don't know. It's going to be a little off, but let's just see where we're at. So we're at what? No, that's about right. So it's fluctuating a little bit, but that looks good. Now, if I slow the motor down with my finger, you're going to see a jump. Ah, that's hot. But you see what I'm talking about is it's, uh, as, I, as I add resistance, you're going to see the amperage jump up, and it is. It's working pretty good. So set your scale, and, uh, and you should be set there. Uh, everything else does look good. I mean, everything else is running very clean. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and go to our motors and turn it off, okay? So I should have actually slowed it down. That's my fault. Uh, all right, so anyway, so that's the answer to the question there is, what do you do uh, when your stuff is jumping around like that? Well, most of the time, to be honest with you, um, uh, most of the time, you don't have a current sensor. On these smaller boards, there won't be a current sensor. And so if there's no current sensor, you're going to get these uh, wacky readings. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to disable it all together. Now, the current sensor I'm using and the ESC sensor are two different things, right? So the ESC sensor communicates to the RXTX in the ESC. And on this one, it's on UART4. But the current sensor itself, the way they've wired this, it'll plug in. Uh, let me see if I can show you that. Okay, so I think we're changing all the lighting here. All right, so the way they wired it, it'll plug in. But um, what you want to do is uh, you want to remember that the uh, current sensor on here, the wire on here, is actually going to go into your current sensor, but you have to have a current sensor uh, on the board, and this one doesn't, okay? Now, if you pick a regular flight controller, uh, this is one that's been beat to heck, but it's got, it's, it's got it right here, um, but on, on these smaller ones, they don't, okay? All right, guys, that's about it. If you have any questions, hit me up at uh, Tark at CycloneFPB.com. Please, as always, uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Your support is always appreciated. Fly safe. My wife makes fun of me. She said that that doesn't sound... What'd you say? Does it make sense when I say that? <laughs> well, I, she does. was hazing me about it. Mm. All right. Fly safe. God bless. Spend time with your family, guys. You never know how much time you're going to have with them, so make the most of it, and we'll see you soon. Say bye, babe. Bye. Okay, that's... <laughs> bye. Peace. <laughs>